Yo, what's going on E7 fam? Pat here, back with another video. And in this one, I want to take some time to talk about 10 things you might not know about Epic 7's user interface, as well as some inventory management tips and tricks. I decided to make this because, well, some of these admittedly I wasn't aware even existed until just a few weeks ago. So I figured there's a pretty good chance some of you out there may not know them as well. So the first thing I want to talk about here is actually a faster way to navigate through your teams as well as your heroes in Epic 7. So you may have noticed here my lobby screen is my girl Luna. I'm eagerly awaiting the arrival of New Moon Luna in just a few weeks time. But if you're on the base lobby, right, there is a faster way for you to actually go and access your team. Previously, you would just go to the bottom left of the hero and hit team and that's a faster way for you to get to it. But as far as I know, this only is on the base lobby, the tavern lobby. If you just click the table here that everyone is sitting around, it immediately brings up your team screen. So this is a faster way for you to just kind of like, you know, mess around with your teams and figure out exactly what you want. Now from this screen, you can actually really quickly also jump to the hero menu by just choosing any of these characters on the side here. For example, I got Abigail at the top and just clicking on her or tapping with your finger if you're on mobile. This will immediately bring you over to the hero screen. Unfortunately though, like I said, only really works in the lobby screen. But that's okay, because there's another quick way for you to navigate around things if you're back here on our my home destiny, screen with Luna. My loyalty, my horns, I offer them all to you. Thanks, Luna. <laughs> Anyways, here in the top right, you can see that there are the four blue squares. If you have never noticed, if you click it, it brings up almost everything in the game for you to access it. There are a couple of oddball things that are not here, like storage, for example. Why, I don't really know. But uh, yeah, you can see almost everything is accessible here for you. And the hero one is just right here, right underneath of the spot where you clicked. So it's very easy for you to just come up here and click, click. You barely have to move your mouse cursor or your finger at all. And you're easily right there into the hero menu. Now for the second thing that I wanna talk about here, as well as the third thing, these two tips are here right on the hero screen. They're relatively new features that I'm not sure how many people know are actually there. So the second one is actually some recommended stats and equipment for you to use in case you're ever unsure of what to play the character on. So you'll see this button here right below your body armor on the character, the hero screen. This used to be the manage equipment screen, which is now this giant blue button, right? But the previous old icon, they've repurposed it. If you click it, it actually brings up a website that shows the stats and usage information for that specific character. So as you can see here for Abigail, a level 60, six star awakened, fully equipped character, Abigail, 21% of the player base is playing her on speed with health as their two piece offset. And if you go over here under stats, you can get an idea of what the average is for the player base. So pretty low attack, probably around like 1300 defense. Health is, you know, much closer to 25k than 9k, so you can guesstimate about 21k, 22k from that. And you can see that speed is much closer to 270 than 110. So maybe like 230, 240. You can see the critical hit chance is maxed out here at 100%. Very little critical hit damage, though. Uh, very little effectiveness, very little ER played on. Going over to exclusive equipments, we can see that 78.46% of the player base is playing her on exclusive equipment number two. And for artifacts, 19.4% player on Proof of Valor, 15.8 on Golden Rose, and 7.6 on Draco Plate. Now I can compare that to my current Abigail, and uh, well, I'm on Sam Sarah Prayer Bees, which is not one of the recommended ones. So maybe I should do some research and start to think about maybe my Abigail build might be outdated or it's not particularly good. So it's something for you to think about in case you ever can't find a guide for a specific character. Uh, or you're just lost on what to do with a new character's release. So the third one is actually an easier way to view your hero menu for some people, because obviously uh, we're at the unit cap. Doing this with the wheel is kind of annoying with 300 units. In the top right hand corner, you hit level here to obviously filter. That's a way for you to kind of trim down this wheel. But they added in a recent update, the search menu here, which you can use to you know find your favorite character. So let's say I want to find Luna. You can go here and it'll immediately jump me over to Luna. So that's something that you can do. But for those of you who play other gotcha games out there, other mobile games, you might be more akin to a rows and columns menu as opposed to the wheel by Epic 7. This little arrow next to the search bar here, clicking it, boom, your entire menu is now in rows and columns format. 
And let's say, you know, this is definitely more manageable, right? Because you uh, can see everything in a grid. It's uh, much more pleasing on the eyes, a lot easier for you to see. Let's say you're looking for uh, a mage in particular. You want to see what all your mage options are. You, you know, maybe you need some more mages for uh, PvP. Let's say you want to find all your blue mages, and it's boom right here. Oh, okay, cool, Aria. Aria is the one I'm the most invested in, so let's uh, go over here. We'll click Aria, and boom, we're right here. Pulls up my Aria. Super easy for me to find exactly what I'm looking for. Might not be for everybody, but it's definitely something that might be helpful to you. Next up is more of an inventory management thing for number four here. And that's that, well, exclusive equipments take up inventory space. Surprisingly, a lot of people don't actually know this. If I click on my Aria exclusive equipment here and hit change, you can see I actually have three in my inventory. Uh, and this one here, even though it's not maxed, right? It's the 15% ER on the S1 increase. Well, here's an 8% one that's an increase on the S1. Well, this one is strictly better than this one. This one's just sitting in my inventory. And in fact, it does, if I come over here, take up space, you can see. It counts towards my inventory space. So for me, if I'm looking to free up my inventory space, I gotta get that out of here. So I'll go over to Sanctuary, and I go over to Exclusive Equipment, and I find one that I might want. Like, so for example, uh, let's say I need like Kisei's, right? You could go over here and just kind of bin all the ones you don't actually want and convert them by clicking these buttons into something. If you just have a problem with inventory space, right? They're just stuck. There's too many things in your inventory and you notice you have like 30 or 40 exclusive equipments just lying around collecting dust. Consider fusing some of them. It will definitely make your uh, inventory management a little bit easier. You won't be having to arrange and get rid of stuff uh, as quickly as possible all the time. And yeah, I just again noticed that a lot of people aren't really aware that exclusive equipment actually ends up taking space. While we're already here in the sanctuary, specifically the Alchemist Steeple, something else I noticed that a lot of people don't realize is that um, you guys actually can extract your modification gems. This is something I learned from my uh, video about not ruining or not bricking gear, right? So if you come over here to the little ice cubes, right? And then under, we normally would start on ingredient cores, you go to modification materials. If you go here to this drop down on the left and go to lesser, you'll see here are all of my lesser modification gems. If you click arrange and select all and then just extract them, you'll get your little cool ice cubes that you could use to make greater modification gems. Because let's be honest, lessers are basically worthless, right? These are the, the these purple ones. These are what you actually want in order to actually uh, start modifying your gear. The lesser ones are just honestly a waste of time and a waste of gold. So I always just extract them and use them in the Alchemist Depot over here to get the purple ones for the sets that I am actually looking for. So for example, if I wanted speed, I just come over here. Uh, once I have 80 of them, throw them in here, just get myself a speed modification gem with the substat of my choice. Our next tip is something that isn't super useful to me, but it might be super useful to you. And that is the ability to hide fully equipped heroes in the inventory screen. So if you bring up the inventory, this leftmost section here shows all the characters in your box that already have equipment on them. So you can see characters like Abigail, Sermia, Edward Elric, they are already fully geared. If I go over here, right, to level and click here, to hide fully equipped heroes, you'll see it hides all of the characters. And these are the characters that just have gear on them. And now I need to make a decision on whether or not I should uh, kind of ungear them. Uh, maybe they're holding something like really good, like say this Holiday Euphine here is holding a 103 equipment score sword. That's pretty premium gear. Maybe I should consider getting all this gear off of her and repurposing it for another character to kind of clean up my inventory, keep things a bit more organized. Or maybe there's a character like Roz down here it's not wearing an artifact, maybe I should slap Arius on him, and that way I can actually start using him in various different contents. So this is a good way for some people to actually kind of plan ahead and figure out what gear is just like lying dead on their characters that they could repurpose, or kind of point you in the direction of what your next project should be, what you started, but what you didn't actually finish. The next tip though, this one is pretty massive, uh, in my opinion. This is one that I personally didn't know until relatively recently, and that is the addition of simple selection in the inventory management. So in the past, I would go over here and click arrange and then just go through one by one and start getting, uh, highlighting the, the pieces of equipment that I don't want to either sell or extract them, right? And some people have like an auto select setup where it'll just automatically go for a specific filter. But there's a better way to do this in case you didn't know. 
Rather than just like manually looking through things, which by the way, if you're not already, come to this menu, turn on equipment detail so you can see that like this thing has speed, but this one doesn't. Big game changer. But this new feature with simple selection is even better than setting up an auto select. So if you come here to this gear, you'll see you have auto select by default with its filters, but there is a simple selection filter that you can set up here. So now you can say, get rid of everything that's not below a specific equipment score. By default, I think this thing is set to like 20 or 22, right? I personally set mine to like 26, 28. And you'll see there's this little box here, exclude equipment with speed substat. You keep that checked. So this thing now that it's set up here, I could go over here, hit a range, hit simple selection, boom. It instantly selects everything for me that's not at least one 28 equipment score or higher starting or just doesn't have the speed stat. And now I can just kind of go and look through and be like, oh, okay, uh, this one's got speed, right? This one doesn't have a speed, but it's 28 equipment score, which is kind of like the minimum. I'm really looking forward to rolling. And then maybe you could nitpick and just like add one here. Like I'm not going to roll this blue. And then I could say, hey, uh, I want to extract these. Boom, done. And now I can neatly see all of the pieces that I have to roll and speed check. Super, super amazing. Definitely get in the habit of doing it. Next up is one that a friend of mine pointed out to me, and uh, I didn't know this actually. And that's that you can actually rename your pets in this game, right? So Flame Fox is the uh, default for my lobby pet here. But if you come over here to details, there's this little scroll next to the lock that allows you to change the pet's name. The first one is free, and the uh, subsequent remaining ones cost uh, 10 Sky Stones, right? So I get, uh, I get 12, uh, 12 characters, so I could like call him like Fox McCloud if I wanted to. Can I get a space in there? Probably not. But yeah, see, there you go. He's Fox McCloud now, and it changes up here. So that is, uh, you know, somewhat useful for those of you guys who actually care about naming your pets and having them be something kind of spiffy, right? Number nine isn't useful so much as it is kind of fun and used for bragging rights. If you come into the hero menu here and click on a character of your choice, which... For me, it's going to be Sermia, right? You can see this little arrow here underneath of Sermia's name. If you click it, it will show you actually how many times you've pulled a specific character from the game's various different gotchas. So this is a pretty fun way for you to have bragging rights to talk about like, oh, who's pulled more of this? Or like, can you believe I pulled this many copies of something? So yeah, nine copies of Sermia is a lot. And this is not just limited to obviously to RGBs. You could do this to compete to see who's pulled the most copies of specific Moonlight five stars, right? Like I pulled three Silverblade Araminthas. Or you can also have bragging rights over some really weird oddities. Like for example, I don't have Dragon Bride Senya or Twisted Eidolon Charon, but I do have Fallen Cecilia, who I've pulled zero times in my Epic Seven career. So let's close it out on a somewhat useful one in that it'll probably save you like a grand total of like 10 seconds every day. And that's the ability to actually skip the web banner animation. So if you come here to ongoing events, for, for right now as I'm recording this, collect dice is our current event, right? I can collect my stamina, right? And then we'll go over here to dice, adventure, and Felicia. A lot of events have these things where they want you to play rock, paper, scissors, or roll dice, or wait for some animation right so for this one here i hit roll and then i have to sit and wait for the dice to roll and you can see receive your reward in your mailbox i get this pop-up so on and so forth there's a faster way to do this in case you don't know you can click roll and as soon as the animation starts just click the header on dice adventure and felicia and it'll immediately just you know actually get there so let me show you here. Let me clear my inbox so that that way you can see what I'm talking about here. So I'll take all of the stamina that I'm going to bank for Rift, go back into ongoing events, and go Dice Adventure and Palicia, hit roll, immediately click Dice Adventure and Palicia, back out, refresh my mailbox. Cool, I got a penguin. Right? So you can literally just immediately hit roll, tap it, and then boom, done. It's already done. I don't have to sit through that animation. So if you just want to quickly get your rewards, that's a faster way for you to actually do it. And that's it. 10 quick tips about the UI as well as the inventory management system in Epic 7. I'm curious, how many of these did you actually know? Let me know down in the comment section below. And if there's other things about the UI you think other players don't know, yeah, put that down there as well. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, rest of your week. Catch you in the next one. Later now.